All right, so you know how earlier, last chapter, we had some um, congruence theorems for triangles? So now we have similarity theorems for triangles, okay? So they're pretty much the same thing, except they'll just show that they're similar. And instead of looking for um, congruent sides, you're going to look for the same proportion that appears every single time you divide it. So what I mean by that is, let's take a look at box 17. So the SSS similarity theorem. Two triangles are similar if three pairs of corresponding sides are proportional. So how would you know if they're proportional? Well, AB, I just point like that. Oh wait, I gotta zoom in here. AB is this one. And then if you divide it by DE, this one. So if you divide the two blue sides, then you should get the same fraction as if you divided BC and EF. So BC divided by EF is this one, BC divided by EF. So if you divide them like first triangle divided by second triangle, and you do that with corresponding size, you should get the same number. Same thing for the last piece which is over here, AC and DF. So AC is this side on the bottom, and DF is this side on the bottom. These are your corresponding sides, meaning they match up with each other. Okay, so if you divide the corresponding sides, if you divide the sides that match up with each other, and you get the same number every time, then your triangles are similar. Okay, so for example, Let's have AB equal, oh my gosh, I don't know how that happened. I just love today. Okay, so for example, if AB is equal to six and DE is equal to three, we can also have BC is like eight and EF is four, and then this one can be like 10 and five. Okay, so let me show you what this means. When we do AB divided by DE, we get six divided by three. We're gonna test, is that the same proportion as the green stuff, BC divided by EF, so eight divided by four. And is that also the same proportion as AC divided by DF? So 10 divided by five. So you gotta simplify all of these. And then if you see that six divided by three is two, which is eight divided by four, which is two, which is 10 divided by five, which is also two. So you get the same number every single time for all the three corresponding pairs of sides, then you know that your triangles are similar. And you would write it like this, triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. I want you to remember that the order you write these letters in does matter. So if A comes first, and D comes first, that means A and D are corresponding corners of your triangle. So A corresponds with D, okay? And similarly, if B is written second and E is also written second, that means B and E correspond to each other, which means they are on the same spot on that triangle, okay? And finally, if C and F are written third, that means C and F are corresponding corners of the triangle as well. So that's just a refresher. You guys should already remember that the order that you write the letters in matters. Okay, so if ABC is congruent, no, is similar to DEF, then A corresponds with D, B corresponds with E, and C corresponds with F. Okay, any questions on this first one? Okay, then let's go on to the second one, which is the SAS similarity theorem. So we had one that was congruence that looks just like this, but now we have it for similarity. So two triangles are similar if two pairs of corresponding sides are proportional and the corresponding included angles are congruent. So let's take a look at what this means. If we have AB divided by DE, so that means 
this long-ish leg looking thing, the second on the side. If you divide this, and it equals the same proportion as when you divide AC and BF. And then you also have the congruent angles A and B. So this included angle, which means the angle that's sandwiched in between. So this angle is the included angle. If your included angle is congruent and you have the same proportions for the purple sides as you have for the green side, then you have similar triangles. Remember the order you write the letters in matters. So if ABC is similar to DEF, remember the order matters. Okay, any questions on these two? Okay, and I know the internet's bad for a couple people, so um, just know that I'm recording this and right after I'm done, I'll put it on the website. So even if you miss it right now, you'll still get a chance to have it later. That's why I do the recordings every single time. Okay, so we did boxes 17, 18, and it doesn't seem like you guys have any questions. So we're gonna move on to 19 and 20. So AA similarity theorem, here I'll just go like this. AA similarity theorem is angle, angle. There is nothing like this for the congruence, but we have one for similarity. Um, hold on, let me fix the attendance. Okay, so two triangles are similar if two pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. So for example, if you have measure of angle A is congruent to measure of angle D, and you have measure of angle C is congruent to measure of angle F, then you have similar triangles. Remember that the order you write the letters in matters. So A must correspond with D. That's why you write both of them first, okay? And then also similarly, C must correspond with F. That's why they are written in the same order. And the reason that this um, similarity theorem works is because in a triangle, all the angles added up must equal 180. So if you got two equal angles, by default, B is also congruent to E, okay? So even though we didn't state it, if two of the angles are already congruent, you know the third one is also, because all three angles in your triangle add up to 180 degrees, always. Any questions? Okay, let's go on to box 20 then. Corresponding parts of similar triangles. So corresponding angles are congruent. It's a typo. There should be an S there. Corresponding angles are congruent and corresponding sides are proportional, not congruent. Okay, so that means it's like what I was saying earlier, J and R, angle J is congruent to angle R. K and S, the second letter, angle K is congruent to angle S. L and T. Angle L is congruent to angle T. So that's for the this bullet point. Corresponding angles are congruent. Now we also have corresponding sides are proportional. So let's see. If we do the first two letters, this is one side. First two letters over here. So JK, the side length, divided by RS. This will give you the same proportion as if you did, for example, KL and ST. KL divided by ST. And this will also give you the same proportion as if you chose the first and last letter, JL divided by RT. Okay? So that's what this one means. The corresponding sides are proportional. So when you divide them, 
you will get the same fraction every single time or the same decimal every single time. You will always get the same number every single time. Any questions? All right, so I'm gonna zoom out now so that there's a, all of this. All right, so here's the notes we did today. Um, I guess I could also do 14, 15, 16. I'm not sure why the lesson plan said not to do this. So I'm just gonna read uh, box 14 to you. Similar triangles are triangles that have all pairs of corresponding angles congruent and all corresponding sides are proportional. Literally, we just did that over here in box 20. So it's pretty much the definition, okay? Um, 15, box number 15 says definition of proportional. It's equal ratios or equal fractions. So it's like two thirds is proportional to six ninths because they are literally the same fraction is just under a different name. And so other fractions that we could have written here is like, maybe nine over, wait, sorry, not nine. Okay, so this one was times three, times three. If we want to find another one, we could also do times four. So like eight over another four here, 12. So eight twelfths would have been another proportional, um, another proportional, fraction. Okay, so these are all proportional. Two thirds, six ninths, eight twelfths. And also when you're solving for proportions, if you have an unknown, so for example, when we get to it later on in our notes, if you have x over 12 is equal to two thirds, these are the steps you can follow. You can cross multiply. So x times three gives you three x and two times 12 gives you 24. And then you just solve from there. Okay. All right. So that brings us all the way to box number 20. We just did 14 through 20. Any questions? Miss Jade? Yes. For box 20, I didn't get to see the bottom of it. Like the, the corresponding sides part. Oh, it's, just, it's just that. Did you want me to like restate it? Is that what you mean? Oh, no. I just, let me just take a picture. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> All right, cool. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right. You can always interrupt me if, if I just went too fast, but sounds like no questions. So I'm going to end the recording.